Hi everybody. So in this lecture, I'd like to talk about how to simulate air resistance with the Python and also to highlight the difference between the different kinds of equations that we have discussed for drag. Um, a more thorough coverage of these equations for drag is covered in another lecture, and so if you need a more thorough review, then you can look there. Um, but to start, remember that we had two equations that we discussed in class for drag. One was so-called viscous drag, and in that one, the drag force is proportional to the speed of the object. Okay. Now remember the equation that we outlined was F drag is equal to minus CV, um, remembering that the drag force always opposes the direction of motion, which is why there's the minus sign. Um, so that's viscous drag, and it's used for slower speeds, for more viscous media, and lighter objects. I usually think about, you know, something falling through maple syrup or, you know, through water or something like that. That's a little bit more of the viscous drag equation. Um, and then second, and this is the equation that we're going to focus on today, um, this equation describes air resistance a little bit more for heavier objects. Um, and the magnitude of the force of air resistance um, can be written as one half times the drag coefficient here, which is big C, times rho A V squared. Okay, and so this is for objects moving at higher speeds through media of lower density compared to the object, where the object might be a higher density, heavier object. Um, and that's why it's more common for air resistance, because air is, of course, the lower density medium, and then the things that move through air typically have a much higher density than the air. So to remind ourselves here, um, C is that drag coefficient. The drag coefficient depends upon mostly geometrical factors. For certain typical shapes, you can determine the drag coefficient for like a cube, for example, at 0 0.8, for a sphere at 0 0.5. But most drag coefficients are measured experimentally or determined experimentally. And so here's some for like a person, a Prius, an airplane wing. They're ranging for like 1.3 to 0 0.05 there, okay? So most of the time you use a wind tunnel or something like that and determine the drag coefficient experimentally. Rho is the density of the medium, um, and A is the cross-sectional area of the object moving through the medium. By the cross-sectional area, what I mean is that um, it's the area that is perpendicular to the direction of motion. And that's, for example, why if you're skydiving, um, if you do a pike position where you make yourself with your feet facing downward, put your hands by your sides, that's going to lower your air resistance. Whereas if you face so that your stomach is facing the ground and spread your arms out, then you're going to have a higher air resistance um, because you've increased the effective cross-sectional area. So um, that's the equation for air resistance. Okay. Now what I'm going to do today is to simulate this air resistance equation, this one half C rho A V squared, using V Python. So the, the example problem that I've kind of made up here is we're going to use V Python to describe the motion of a baseball dropped from very high um, as it falls to earth. Now the reason I'm dropping it from very high is because I want you to see the dependence of the velocity um, as it falls. It's not going to just fall like it's not under gravity, it's going to asymptotically approach that terminal velocity, and I wanted you to see that. So you have to drop it from pretty high to see that. The baseball has a mass of 155 grams and a radius of 3.5 centimeters. The drag coefficient for a baseball is about 0.35, and we're going to use 1.3 kilograms per cubic meter as the density of air. We're going to assume that the density of air doesn't change much over the height that the baseballs drop through. Um, we're also going to make sure that we use the air resistance that's proportional to V squared, not the viscous air resistance, but the one that's proportional to V squared. And we're also going to remember that air resistance is always opposite to the direction of motion for our ball. So I'm going to show you how that's coded here in a minute. And we're going to code the drag force within the loop within each time step because the drag force will need to be updated, right? As the object speeds up, then the, um, the drag force will increase. And what we're going to do is we're going to compare the terminal velocity that we calculate theoretically to the terminal velocity that we find in the code. So let's do the theoretical comparison first. Remember that the terminal velocity is when the air resistance force is equal in magnitude to the force of gravity. 
And that's because if you draw the free body diagram for the object, let's just say you have an object falling downward, mg pulling downward will accelerate the object so that the velocity increases over time. As the velocity increases, the air resistance, the force of air resistance also increases. It keeps increasing until the force of air resistance equals the force of gravity. And at that point, the object can't accelerate anymore and the velocity is constant. And that's called the terminal velocity. So if you set those magnitudes equal, 1 half C rho A V terminal squared is equal to mg, then you can solve for V terminal. Now for our baseball, um, that ends up being about 41.7 meters per second. And so now we're going to compare that theoretical value that we got here to what we see in the vPython code. Okay, now I have the link to the code shown here. This is a public uh, program, so anybody can look at it if they want. I'm going to go ahead and pull this over so that everybody can see. So this is my code. So first of all, let me run the program. It's a really simple program. It just shows the ball falling. I've turned on Make Trail so that you can watch the ball fall. Um, it's just going to make a straight line. It's not very exciting. Um, but here we go. So um, here's the ball. It's it's falling, and then Make Trail is on so you can see the path of the ball. Now that's not that exciting. It's just falling down. Um, but what you can see here is a plot. I created a plot within the code of the um, velocity on the vertical axis versus time on the horizontal. Okay, And as the ball falls, it's going to fall until it hits the ground, basically. Um, and then you can see that the velocity starts out at zero because the ball is released from the rest. And then it accelerates downward. And as it accelerates, you can see the rate of the acceleration are, is changing. So first you have a nice what looks like a straight line here um, because the speed of the object is pretty slow and so your drag force is also pretty slow so mostly you've got gravity acting downward so it looks straightish here but as the speed increases the drag force increases too and so the acceleration of the object gets lower and lower and the slope gets uh, l more shallow and less steep until eventually um, it reaches that terminal velocity and now you have a nice horizontal line with a constant um, velocity. And you can see I can mouse over my curve and when I mouse over my curve here um, I'm getting about 41.7 meters per second for my terminal velocity. Okay, so that's what's happening there. Okay, so that is a nice match between theory and the coding which means I coded it correctly. Alright, so let's go in and look at the code so that you can see how to handle air resistance in code. All right, now um, I put some things in that I thought you might want to use later um, in your own code, like I put in um, an origin here if you wanted a reference for how things are moving, so I put in an origin. You can't really see it on that code because I'm so high above the ground, but there you go. Okay, now I coded in, remember in the front part of your code you want to put all the constants that you're going to use later and you want to define your variables. And so I started off defining my mass as um, 0.155 kilograms. Um, the radius of my ball, R, is 0 0.035 meters. And then I go ahead and place my ball, okay? So I call my object ball, not very originally, right? Um, and then I make it a sphere, and I put its position uh, 500 meters above the ground. I told you I was going to put it high. So this is a, 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 a ball dropped from a very tall um, height. And then I set the radius of my sphere equal to the radius of my ball, and I make it yellow, and I turn on Make Trail so that you can see the path of the ball as it goes through the air. All right, now I define some of my other variables that I'm going to need for my um, calculating my drag. I've got rho, the density of air, is 1.3 um, kilograms per cubic meter. i got my area, my cross-sectional area of my ball is going to be a circle, right? So that's pi r squared, so 3.14 times r squared. And then I have my drag coefficient that was given to me in the problem of 0.35. All right, now I'm going to initialize my variables and de define some of the constant forces. So my momentum, I'm going to start off releasing my ball from rest. Um, so I have m times v, but my velocity is 0, so m times the vector 0, 0, 0. Remember, you, you should initialize your variables, and then once you're in the loop, you update their values. So that's why I give it the initial value here outside of the loop. I have the force of gravity, which I've called, not very originally, gravity, which is mg. 
And remember here, m I defined by mass, and then g is 9.8 meters per second squared down. Um, so that's why it's in the y position here in negative. I initialize my time at t is equal to 0, and I have a time step of 1 100th of a second. Now I want to plot my velocity, and so I have vertical velocity is this curve, and I made my graph red, because I like red. There you go. All right, now I want my ball to fall as long as it's above the ground. So I put it 500 meters in the air, and then um, what I'm saying is that while the ball's position is greater than 0 0.035. Now, why 0 0.035? Because the ball's radius is 3.5 centimeters. So once the bottom of the ball touches the ground, we're all done. So um, while the ball's position is above 0 0.035, then the loop will run. Then I define my rate. It's very important so that you can visualize to put your rate in. I um, go ahead and define the direction of motion. Now, the reason that this is important is because drag is a vector, okay? And you have to say always that your drag points opposite to the direction of your motion. So to do that, I define my direction of motion as the unit vector that points in the direction of momentum, right? So p hat, I call it p hat, is equal to hat of p. And that gives me the unit vector for my momentum. Then I calculate the magnitude of my drag force, okay? The magnitude of my drag force is uh, 1 half c rho a v squared. So here's my 0.5 times c times rho times my area times. Now, my momentum is a vector. It's a vector, okay? So that means that in order to find the speed squared, I have to take the magnitude of my momentum vector, mag of p, and then divide it by the mass, and that gives me my speed, okay? And then I square my speed. And then in order to uh, find the direction, I multiply it times the minus and then times p hat. And so that's how you find your drag force, all right? Um, lots of times when I'm grading these uh, the Python assignments, I will see that people just try to square the p here, and then sometimes that gives them problems um, because p is a vector. Okay, so just make sure that you do the magnitude of p over m, and that'll um, help you out a lot. Now, once I have defined my drag force, I've already calculated what my gravity force is. So now that I have all my forces defined, I can do my momentum update equation. And my momentum update is my new momentum is equal to my old momentum plus the sum of my forces times my time step delta t. So here p is equal to p plus gravity plus drag times delta t. And that, that updates the value of my momentum. Then I update my position, okay? And my updated position is my ball's, my ball's new position is equal to the old position plus v times delta t. V is my velocity, which is P over M, and then times delta T, all right? And then I go ahead and um, make my plot, put a data point in my plot where I'm plotting um, the Y component of my velocity vector, and that's uh, P dot Y over M, okay? Uh, so, and then I plot the, that velocity versus time. And then I increment my time step, and that's it. So that's how you can simulate this. So you can use this base code um, as a starting point for more complex problems where you have to calculate a drag force, okay? I think I've made it generic enough that you can, uh, you can apply this elsewhere. So I hope that helps um, with some of your vPython homework and your vPython assignments. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, I'll see you in class.